The Bible is the most amazing book in the world because it is focused on the most amazing individual that ever lived and it's specifically written to you. Within the pages of the Bible, there are many profound truths and some of these very special truths from God make up some of the best news that the world has ever heard. Now, each biblical concept, when put in its proper context, makes the whole of the Bible understandable and approachable to anyone who is truly seeking the truth. Well, let's start at the beginning. We are all given one life to live from God. Once our life ends, we will face judgment. The Bible tells us that it's appointed for man to die once, and after this comes the judgment. This is where some bad news comes in. There are only two ways to live this life, either in the way of sin or in the way of righteousness, and our way determines how the judgment will go. Jesus said, the hour is coming when all who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth, those who have done good to the resurrection of life, but those who have done evil will come forth to the resurrection of condemnation. Now the only real way to distinguish between sin and righteousness is the law of God. Paul explained that the law revealed his sin to him. Have you ever lied, or lusted, or taken the Lord's name in vain, or taken anything that doesn't belong to you, or broken any of the Ten Commandments? Don't worry, we all have. But that does not make it okay, and it doesn't make the law bad. It makes us bad. Or more specifically, it makes us rebellious, selfish, and self-centered. The law of God comes from the Word of God, so it is holy, just, and good. It is simply describing what sin is and what righteousness is and how we will be judged at the end of this life. So, while we live out this life, the fundamental diagram so far is simply this. Sin and righteousness separated by the law. And righteousness is obedience to God's word, by the way. Now we have all sinned by disobeying God, and sin is the breaking of God's law. Sin and lawlessness, which is living outside of God's moral law, is the same thing, according to the Bible. Once we break God's law, we are condemned by the law as having fallen short, and the law then condemns us as sinners destined for judgment. Jesus explains that he will send all those people who practice lawlessness away from him at the very end. If we die in this state of lawlessness, we will end up in hell for eternity. Now, Jesus explains this by warning that he will send all those who work iniquity to a place where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. But now the good news. The Bible reveals and history even proves that God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son to rescue us from our dilemma. The way Jesus rescues us is this. He died to pay the penalty for our sin so we could be saved from our slavery to sin and its consequences. Jesus died to set us free or redeem us from every lawless deed, meaning every sin, so he could purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works, which is the same thing as righteousness. Since we could not keep the law perfectly, and no amount of trying could fix our past mistakes, Jesus made a bridge. The Bible explains that Jesus came with the fullness of God in him, and by what Jesus did, the Father can reconcile or make peace with all things to himself. Jesus can make peace between us and God through the blood of his cross if we accept his free gift. We, who were once alienated and enemies of God in our mind because of our sinful works, can now be reconciled to God through what Jesus did. 
The first step to receiving this free offer is to agree with God that sin is wrong and turn from it. That's what repentance means. Repentance can be summed up as this, dying to sin, which is to say that we are dying to the part of us that desires to sin. And the Bible calls that part of us our flesh. This act is the beginning of the road to life with God. We also humbly recognize that we could not save ourselves. So we put our faith in the cross of Jesus Christ to save us from our sin and allow God to forgive us for our sins. Repentance alone cannot save us. We must also put our trust or faith in Jesus Christ and what he did for us on the cross as the only source of forgiveness for our sins. Also, faith without repentance is dead, so it takes both working together to truly set us free from sin through the blood of the cross. Now, this so far is the basics of the good news or gospel, and it's the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes in his son. Through the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed in us from faith to faith. Because Jesus paid the penalty for our sin and we received that gift by repentance and faith, God can forgive us, count us as righteous, and give us new life. And this is how we become born again. This new spiritual man created by God is united to the Holy Spirit who comes to live inside of those who are born again. So now our new being is united to the Holy Spirit of God and we are empowered to live in obedience to God's holy word. God set us free from sin so that we could choose to obey him in faith and repentance by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, Paul warns that if we choose to disobey the Spirit and live like we used to in sin, that will still lead to death and judgment. Now, the empowerment to obedience, the cleansing from sin, the new birth in the Spirit, salvation from sin's condemnation, and everything else all came from the kindness of God, not our works. And this is called grace. God enables us to repent through his law. He enables us to believe through hearing of his word. And we must simply use the tools that he has given us. God does all of this for us by his grace and that totally eliminates any room for boasting. God's grace instructs us to keep doing what we have done so far which is keep living as dead to sin while we keep trusting in God to help us live according to his word. God's grace does not permit us to go back to sinning because that would be receiving God's grace in vain and that also leads to judgment. Now, if you stop believing or stop repenting, you have fallen from grace and you are under the law again. You must continue in the faith trusting God to help you obey his word. He is the source of your strength, so your relationship with God is what allows you to stay free from sin. That's why seeking God in faith is so important. We must also continue in repentance, being dead to sin, because we died to sin with Jesus when we repented and believed. Paul explains that sinners will not inherit the kingdom of God, so we must not be deceived about this simple fact. Jesus set us free from our slavery to sin, and if we hold on to his gospel in repentance and faith, we will not live in sin. So now our soul is united to the Holy Spirit of God, and we can choose to die to the flesh and live life following the Holy Spirit every day in continued faith and repentance. And if we walk by the Spirit, who will always lead us into obedience to God's word, we will not do the sinful things that our flesh wants to do. Now, if we choose to disobey the Spirit and live according to the flesh in sin, we will not inherit the kingdom of God. So 
if we have faith but set aside repentance, then we're living after the flesh and not after the spirit. And Paul warned all of the churches that he wrote to not to continue in sin in no uncertain terms. Now, the opposite mistake is to keep repentance but set aside faith. So we must also continue in faith, relying on God. The book of Galatians was written to a church that had set aside their faith in God to try and ritualistically please him with ceremonies that were never designed for that purpose in the first place. Things like circumcision, avoiding unclean foods, or doing certain ritual washings were never meant to spiritually clean anyone. They were just symbols of deeper spiritual realities that are revealed in the New Testament. Now, if we accidentally fall into sin, we are condemned by the law as transgressors and God will chastise us in his grace to bring us back to repentance. And if we confess our sin, obviously in repentance, God is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from our iniquity. But if we deliberately keep on sinning, ignoring the Holy Spirit and the gracious chastisement of God, we are headed for a fiery judgment and it will be even worse for those who had known all of these good things and turned away. God saved many people out of Egypt in the book of Exodus who later refused to obey him and they perished for their disobedience. Paul in 1 Corinthians 10 explains in detail that that story was written down as a warning for us. While living in repentance and faith, God gives us hope to motivate us to continue and persevere to the end while obeying him. John explains that anyone who truly has this heavenly hope will purify himself just as God is pure. And the ultimate form of obedience to God flows from our miraculously changed heart because the ultimate form of obedience is love. Love for God and love for our neighbor because love is the character of God and it's the character of the follower of Jesus Christ. Paul explains that this is the whole purpose of the commandment. Love from a pure heart, a good conscience, and a sincere faith. So, we are saved from the condemnation of sin by repentance toward sin and faith in Jesus Christ. And the only way to identify sin is the law. Also, only faith in Jesus can set us free from sin's bondage. His blood allows God to graciously forgive us and the Holy Spirit can then join us and clean us and fill us so we can live according to God's word in faith, hope, and love. This is the foundation of the gospel, repentance from dead works and faith towards God. And this foundation has a very specific seal that plainly declares these words. The Lord knows those who are his and everyone who names the name of the Lord must depart from iniquity. Jesus has made the way and we can follow our Savior in the power of the Spirit by repentance in faith, with hope and love, on the way to eternal life. This is the good news of the gospel.